that's very dear to my heart, and that is succeeding in academia or tech uh, if you happen to be both a woman and a parent. I started my PhD with a six-month baby in tow and had my second child four years later. When I told people I was pursuing my PhD with young children, um, many asked me if I was crazy, and frankly, I wondered if I was. Um, the conclusion I came to is that anybody who works full-time in this country with young children is a little crazy. Um, whether you're in academia or the private sector, it is an incredibly difficult undertaking. We should talk emotional about it. And, uh, the lack of support is um, available to parents is something that all of us, um, I think, know. But what I want to honor today is what made it possible for me and the other parents who su to succeed here at Berkeley, especially us female scholars in a traditionally uh, male-dominated fields. Uh, it, is notice it is notable that of our four PhD graduates today, three of us are parents. We're not the majority in our program, but what was once exceptional to pursue your, pursue your degree while pregnant or as a parent is now a lot less so. But despite many miraculous advances in technology, it is still women who are on the hook for bearing children. And as much as I would have loved to have passed that duty on to my husband, uh, it is we women, even in the most equal of caretaking relationships, who are disproportionately affected by having children. Unlike both the tech sector and the working world in general, we at public universities actually have the law on our side. And specifically, that's Title IX. Title IX was passed in 1972, and over the past 44 years, it's been used to challenge barriers to women's educational opportunities. But this is still an ongoing process. Um, here at Berkeley, one of the most recently policy, recent policy changes to help pregnant women, pregnant students, was enacted just this past year. Uh, but academia is not a child-rearing utopia. As an example, it was only about 12 years ago that my best friend, who is here today, and a Cal graduate, and we'll forgive her for working at Stanford, <laughs> uh, was a young professor of mechanical engineering at a major research university, and the second female professor hired in the history of her department. When she was pregnant with her first child, who is also here today, she was asked her department about maternity leave options. And she, were told, she was told there were none. And after all, why would you need parental leave policies if all your professors are men? So fortunately, her needs forced her school to create a policy and create a more supportive environment for other women faculty. This will be hot. <laughs> Many of you graduating today are not yet parents. Some of you never will be, and that's fine. For that, I and a legion of other parents place a curse upon you for your bountiful sleep and your relaxing vacations, neither of which we ever get anymore. Uh, but as you prepare to enter a field where women have long been underrepresented, Understanding that supporting gender diversity isn't just about giving women access, but keeping the same rules in place. And it's not just about leaning in and leaning in and leaning in until you fall on your face. It requires restructuring the entire workplace to allow for a range of opportunities for partic participation for women and men, for birth parents and co parents. In closing, while Title IX has created opportunity for women at public universities, laws do not create change on their own. For me and my peers to be here today, we have been fortunate for the support, not just of our partners and families, but for the staff and the faculty here at the School of Information who have made our edu educational journey possible by carrying out the intent of those laws. So many of you here have been allies in our journey. But we must give special thanks to our professors and mentors at the high school, who are mothers themselves, and who truly understand what we mean when we complain at the entire as in the kind of tired you are when you've been woken up ten times in the middle of the night by your screaming kid tired. Not because you're having fun. And they are uh, our dean, Professor Anosaki. Thank you. Uh, Laura, Laura's advisor, Professor Kamiko Rioka. Uh, Professor Jenna Burrell, who's not here today. And of course, my amazing advisor, Professor Kamiko Rioka. <laughs>
bearing children before I had ten. I had two children before. And thank you for reminding me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Because this is an issue that has definitely not been fully addressed. I think Berkeley is ahead of the game in many ways compared to some of our peer institutions, but we have a long way to go for making the academy inclusive in all of the ways that we actually believe. Um, and when I say inclusive, I mean inclusive of parents, of different gender backgrounds, of different gender types, of different racial backgrounds, of different um, you know, religions. Um, we, as a society, we have a long way to go, and I think we should be leaders. And let's all commit in the institutions that we work in, in the institutions we go to, to continue to make that change possible. Thank you so much for those.